Hey what is up everyone, welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video, my name is Floppy and in today's video we're going to be going over how to make a key on a keyboard open a GUI. So now this is not your normal standard E to open a GUI or X to open a GUI using a proximity prompt. We are not using any sort of proximity prompt in this tutorial where you have to go and hold down a key on your keyboard. This is straight from if you had to go and click X or E or any um, little key on your keyboard, then your GUI is going to be opening. So for example, let's say we went and clicked X on our keyboard, I click X, then a GUI is going to open up on our screen. And then if I click X again, then the GUI is going to go and close. This type of system is seen in a number of Roblox games, for example, Pet Simulator X. If a player had to go and click X on their keyboard, then their inventory GUI would open up. So for starters, we wanna make sure our Explorer and Properties are enabled. If our Explorer and Properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on View, and enable Explorer and Properties, and they should show up somewhere over your screen. So now that you've made sure that your Explorer and Properties are enabled, we wanna head over here to our Explorer, click on the plus button next to our starter GUI, and then insert a screen GUI. We're gonna be using frames for this tutorial. I'm not gonna go over the main creation of the frames, I'm just gonna be using a very basic bland frame just like that because it doesn't really matter what you do with your frame, it is gonna work exactly the same. So we've got our main frame here, you can go and adjust it out to how you would like. Obviously it depends on what sort of frame you're using, so go and do it accordingly. But for this tutorial, we've just got our main frame here because it doesn't really matter. Anyway, we've got our frame, so then I'm gonna click on the plus button and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of the frame which is going to be opening, obviously you need to have this in your main frame, so whichever frame is holding everything else, for example your shop or your Game Pass shop frame, whatever frame is holding uh, the things that you want to display is going to be where this local script is located. So you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So this is a very short code, so I'm gonna quickly go over it just so you guys can get a little bit of a better understanding. So on line one, we identify our local GUI, and our local GUI is the GUI that is gonna be holding everything that we wanna to display to the player, and that is going from our script to the parent, so it's going from our script where this script is located, to our parent, which is the frame, so script.parent to our frame, we're identifying our frame right there. So here then on line three, we're creating ourselves a local function, which is eventually then called later down over here, but this is creating our local function. So this is what is going to happen when our key is actually pressed. So if input.keycode equals equals enum.keycode.x, then everything else, then our GUI will become visible, but we'll get to that here shortly. But going back to line four here, if input.keycode equals equals enum.keycode.x, you're able to change X to whatever you want. So on default, if we had to go and leave our script here now and go test it out, it would work, but a player would need to click X to open the GUI. So depending on what type of um, uh, key on your keyboard you want to actually um, open the GUI with, for example, let's say you're wanting it to not be X and you want it to be E, you would remo remove the X and then you would type in E just like that and click enter or just whatever and type in E or the character that, or the key that you would actually like to use to open the GUI. So now if we had to go leave the script, we'd have to join into the game and then you would be able to click E to open the specific GUI that we have created just before. Now let's say you're using something else, for example, um, F1, you type in F1 one just like that and now a player needs to click f1 to be able to open the gui but we're going to be using x for this example anyway so when our key is then clicked then if gui.visible equals equals true then gui.visible equals false so now the reason we do this is simply because how the script works is when a player goes and clicks for example in our instance clicks x then the gui is let's say now i click x the gui is then going to become visible then, once I'm finished with the GUI, there's gonna be no X button up here. All you need to do then to close the GUI again, the player just has to go and click X again, and then the GUI is going to be closed. So that's why we have it up here. This is checking to see if it's visible already. If it is visible already, it is then going to change it back to false. If it is not visible already, it is then gonna make the GUI visibility to true. This is currently false, this is true. False, 
true. This is the GUI that is currently visible, and this is the GUI when it is currently false or invisible. So this checks if GUI.visible equals equals true. So if the visit GUI visibility is true, then it changes the GUI visibility to false, so it's invisible. Else, if the GUI is uh, not visible already, then it sets the GUI to be visible, so that the GUI is then visible to that player. So then here on line 13, it goes game get service, user input service, dot input began, connect on key press, and that is calling our local function. So once you've gone and adjusted everything to your preference and how you would like it, you wanna head up here, click on the X button next to your local script, and then we can go test it out. Now, before we go and test it out, you wanna make sure that your frame is currently disabled. It is not currently visible, so your screen doesn't look like this. You wanna make sure that your frame is disabled upon a player joining into the game. All the, the GUI is just gonna be standing there and on the player screen when they initially join into the game, and that's not exactly what we want. So we wanna join in with the GUI being invisible. So go click on play so we can go test it out. As you guys can see, we are now inside of the base play, and if I go click on X on our keyboard, the GUI will open, and then if I go click on X again to close the GUI, the GUI will close. And as you guys can see, the GUI open when I click X, and the GUI also closes when I click X again. Now, something I would like to add on, you don't necessarily need to have this local script inside of our frame. You can always have it in your screen GUI. It's up to you if you want to keep a little bit more organized, but it's, it doesn't really matter where your local script is located. As long as it's located somewhere in the screen GUI or the frame, it doesn't really matter. But if you had to go and say, put it in the screen GUI, it would still work, but you would need to go and change uh, your um, variable of local GUI or your shortcut and actually identify your GUI here because our GUI is not our screen GUI, our GUI is our frame. So if we had to go, for example, here, it, it wouldn't work now because we're going to the script or the parent to identify our GUI and our GUI isn't this screen GUI, our GUI is the frame. So for the, in this instance, our local script is parented to the screen GUI so we go in the script here we go script.parent, it goes to the screen GUI, then we would just want to go dot frame, and now if we had to go join into the game, it would then work. Depending on what your frame name is called, you can go and change it accordingly, but that's only if you really wanted to put your local script inside of your screen GUI. It doesn't matter if you have it in the screen GUI, it doesn't matter if you have it in the frame, it's up to you. If you guys are a little bit lost and needing a little bit of assistance, feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we can happily help you out. But in a way, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also do consider liking the video. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.